Content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Cornerstone Retirement Partners presents Your Course to Retirement with Grand Rapids Certified Financial Planner Ron Courser and Nolan Gosley. Cornerstone Retirement Partners are planning today for the potential of tomorrow. And welcome into the program. This is Your Course to Retirement with Grand Rapids Resource for a common sense approach to making decisions and choices with our money, about our finances, investment, and retirement future. And with us today, we've got a very special guest, Nancy Courser, taking care of the health care side of the practice there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. Nancy, always a pleasure. Thank you very much, Peter. Different time of the year, but happy to be back. Yeah, and it's it's always great to see you. I mean, we know that Ron is the founder of Cornerstone Retirement Partners, but we know who the brains of the operation is. But uh, all, <laughs> all, all jokes aside, uh, I know that it is a team approach, very much a team approach there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. There's Ron, who is a CFP certified financial planner. There's Nolan Gosley uh, taking care of the wealth side of planning. And then you and your team on the healthcare side of planning, both obviously very important for a confident financial future. Absolutely. So over the last 15 or 16 years working with Ron in particular, because he founded the corporation, I have been helping people with their health insurance. So we believe it important to connect the health and the wealth. So working with Ron and Nolan, we have an opportunity to help our clients really with kind of that one-stop shopping. The concept being When you're no longer working, you may need some health insurance called the Affordable Care Act, or when you're eligible for Medicare, which is what we're going to talk about today, you may want some education as well as some assistance in picking the best plan for you. Well, if you do feel like you need that education or assistance in picking the best plan, pick up the phone and give Cornerstone Retirement Partners a call, 616-301-2581. That is 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, or a quick trip over to cornerstone-rp.com. That's cornerstone-rp.com, and you can get in touch with Nancy or Ron or the rest of the team there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners through the website, and they detail some of the information and the background on their approach to both health and wealth there on the website. So lots of fantastic resources there. And again, the easiest way just to pick up the phone, give a call 616-301-2581. Now, Nancy has over 15 years of experience helping people who are turning 65, that magic age for Medicare and retiring or losing group health insurance. Those are also events where, Nancy, people need your help, your guidance and assistance, and the knowledge, maybe most importantly, that you have about how to address our health care needs. Uh, you're an independent advisor representing multiple different companies and plans and really just helping people to sort through all of those in order to find the best plan for their situation and scenario, correct? And- Absolutely. So we help people throughout the course of the year. And um, last time we talked, Peter, that was open enrollment. And that runs from October through the early part of December. Now, today's conversation, we're going to focus more on the Medicare Advantage plan. But know that we're helping our clients as well as people who have an interest in finding out more about Medicare at any point in time throughout the year. So We're busy, primarily super busy in the fall, but during this period of time now, we are helping with questions, we're helping with plans, interpretations, how do I get enrolled in part A and B, what's the difference between this plan versus that plan, so it's a a year-round activity for myself and my team, we do have two other people that are part of my team, so there's a total of three of us. The name of our program or our team is Medicare Made Simple because it's anything but simple. 
Um, it is complicated. It is overwhelming, especially when you're first eligible. But also this time of the year, when people have already made a selection for their plan 2022, we want to make sure that they take full advantage of their plan benefits. Now, Medicare is one of the largest healthcare systems that people rely on. It's more than just a few or a handful of folks that this information is going to be important for. I think Medicare is probably one of the largest insurers that's out there, right? That's the one of the largest plans that, that we have as a percentage of the population that relies on Medicare. Absolutely. So they claim there's a little over 44 million people that are eligible for Medicare. Many of them are because they turned 65 or became eligible once they are no longer working, but in the system called Medicare and enrolled in Part A and Part B. And um, the government has shown us statistics that over the next five to 10 years, that number will really continue to escalate because there's a whole lot of baby boomers that's the generation right now that is turning 65 or deciding that they need their, their Medicare. Yes. Now, there are a lot of people, and I think it's probably an increasing number of participants who are choosing an advantage plan within the Medicare system. Can you talk about the reasons why that might be? And, and maybe even backing up from that, what an advantage plan is? Sure. Absolutely. So in starting, everybody has to be enrolled in Medicare Part A and B. That is the beginning. That is the foundation of getting, um, of going any further in terms of adding on what we call supplemental or add on kinds of insurance. Medicare does not pay for everything. And there is a cost associated with Medicare. So sometimes that's even a, an eye opener for people. Yes, Medicare does have a cost. Medicare, in many ways, original Medicare, which is part A and part B, has the design of a group health plan. It has deductibles, it has co-pays, it has maximum out-of-pocket expense for the year, so on and so forth. So when we help people, first we make sure that they have a good understanding of part A and B. And then they recognize that there are a lot of gaps and they don't want that kind of exposure. So we start talking to them about their options. And there really is, there really are two options. I guess you could say there's three because there are people that do nothing. And all they do is sign up for original Medicare Part A and Part B. But those that do decide they want something above and beyond have a choice of either original Medicare and then adding what we call a Medigap supplement and then they also add a prescription drug plan. So those folks carry three cards in their wallet and they are spending more money than the other option, but they also are closing the gaps on the out-of-pocket expense related to their medical expense. Their prescription drug plan is a standalone plan and they have the opportunity to renew that once a year. The other option, which is becoming increasingly popular, and that's the one we're going to talk more about today, is called the Medicare Advantage Plan. So the Medicare Advantage Plan combines Part A and Part B, and it becomes Part C in terms of how the government categorizes that plan. So there is oversight by Medicare and Medicaid in the design of the Medicare Advantage plans. So how they are different is they have a lower monthly premium. And in many cases, more than ever this year, I saw lots of zero premium plans. So the participant in the plan still paid for their Part B premium. The base premium this year is of $170.10, but they opted to pay as they go. So they have co-pays, they have out-of-pocket expense, they have deductibles, but they decided based on their health history and based on their finances and a variety of things, they decided to opt into the Medicare Advantage plan. One of the um, big characteristics of the Advantage plan is definitely the network. And that's a difference between the original Medicare versus the Medicare Advantage plan. 
So what we're talking about in general is anybody on Medicare is working with a doctor, a hospital, a lab that does participate in Medicare. That's absolutely the first item of business here. When we talk about the Advantage plan, it's imperative that the participant, the insured, works within, ideally, the network of the plans. And that's where the Advantage plan is different. Again, not doing a big comparison here between the two, but the Medigap plan does not require the participant to be in a network. So that's when we talk about HMOs and PPOs that clearly resides on the Medicare Advantage plan side. Let me ask you then, are there some doctors and hospitals that actually don't participate in Medicare? They can choose whether they do or they, they can choose to opt out? Yes, they, they, can, they can choose to opt out. When we talk about, about emergency and urgent care anywhere in the United States, because Medicare is a 50-state program, the insured, the participant clearly will be covered because that is our U.S. healthcare system. So regardless of whether or not they're being treated by a Medicare doctor or hospital, they're good to go, okay? It's when we start talking about the other plans in terms of supplemental that it is possible that the doctor or the, uh, not so much the hospital, but probably more the doctor or the specialist or maybe even the lab, they may choose not to participate in Medicare. What I have found is many folks who currently have a doctor or a specialist that once they become Medicare eligible, often those doctors will keep them in as a patient. It's the brand new entrant. So it's the person new to the community that's looking for a primary care doctor, new to the community and looking for a specialist, or even their specialist has retired and now they're back out looking for someone else. It may be under that scenario that the doctor is saying, no, I'm not taking any new Medicare patients. So it's always a great idea to check with that doctor's office, especially if you're a new patient, and make sure that they will take and participate in Medicare. Now, now you mentioned costs, and, and we hear about the expenses of health care, but I think that a lot of people are under the impression that they, they've paid into Medicare through payroll deductions their whole life, and therefore Medicare may not have a cost. At least those that are not yet in the system may have that perception. But I think we learn pretty quickly once we actually enter into the system that, yes, indeed, there, there is a cost to Medicare, um, both for premiums and then ongoing expenses, as you mentioned, the deductibles and the co-pays. Can you break those down a little bit again for us? What are the, the costs of Medicare? Sure. Okay. So what we have is, as you said, when you're working, you're paying into Medicare Part A, and you have to have worked at least 10 years or more. And if you look at your paycheck, you'll see that there is a Medicare payroll tax. So as long as you satisfy the 10 years, either because you yourself were working or your spouse can also qualify you, perhaps you're a, a stay-at-home parent, you still qualify as long as your spouse worked 10 years or more, and the premium associated with that is zero. When we talk about Medicare Part A, we're talking about the hospitalization, so you've been admitted to the hospital. When you're admitted to the hospital, there's a 60-day window, and the premium, or the deductible, I should say, is, a, is almost $1,600. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but based on a 60-day period of time, you could be responsible for a $1,600 deductible, whether you were there one day or you were there 59 days. After that, it will be broken down into co-pays. And again, we get into the two and the $300 uh, a day range when we start pushing past those 60 days. If you can't go home and you've been in the hospital, you might find that the recommendation is to move into what's called skilled nursing for a period of time. And the first 20 days of skilled nursing are paid for by Medicare. Now, one thing to note is if you do have a Medigap plan, 
you have to have spent three days in the hospital before you can actually move into skilled nursing. So that's important. Whereas if you have the Advantage plan, most of the Advantage plans let you go right from the hospital right into the skilled nursing. So what happens in skilled nursing are things like medication management, perhaps for the first 20 days. You've got physical therapy, occupational therapy, all rehabilitation kinds of services before you go back home. Anything after day 21 also has a copay. It's almost $200 a day now. And that goes from day 21 to day 100. So that's the A port portion of Medicare. Once you've been released from the hospital, then you're talking about Medicare Part B and the medical services under Medicare Part B is what everyone pays for that's on Medicare. And again, today we're not talking about Medicaid. That's a special program for people with lower incomes. We're talking about Medicare. And Medicare says every year we're going to evaluate what you're going to pay for your Part B. And this year, the base premium for either a single person or a married person under a certain threshold is in the neighborhood of $170.10. And, and I think Anything, that that's an important, I'm yeah. sorry, an important distinction. No, you though, go ahead. Is that there, there just seems to be a lot of confusion in the public before we actually get enrolled into these systems. There seems to be some confusion between Medicare and Medicaid and the benefits that each one of those systems offers. Right. So for Medicaid, um, it, it, it's another perhaps complicated program. It isn't necessarily one I specialize in, but what I can tell you is there's different levels of Medicaid as well, where the government will look at the income. They will then determine whether there needs to be a payment towards Part B. And then some of the services are absolutely no cost to whoever the insured is. Medicaid also has their own network and their network tends to be a little more narrow in terms of who the person can go see as far as their doctor and their specialist and that type of thing. And that's also a program that's evaluated from an income standpoint on a regular basis, generally once a year. Now, I do know that they're a bit behind because I've had a few people ask me about their benefits and they're like, you know, we haven't heard from anybody. But I, I think the government's still playing catch up from some of the pandemic and, and whatnot. But yes, it is a program that's based on income. And then there are actually different plans available to people that are on Medicaid. And there is such a thing as a dual eligible, which is somebody that has access to Medicare and Medicaid. So, so many so, different moving parts and, and different absolutely. plans all together. And then within each of those systems themselves, different options and plans. That's and right. The, and that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you need a resource that, that is, is well versed in these health care support systems, in your health insurance coverage, in order to help make the best decisions for you. And that's why Nancy Corser and her team there, as part of Cornerstone Retirement Partners, focus on the health side of planning. You can give them a call, 616-301-2581. If you've got any questions, that's 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Now, Nancy, I would, I would wager that you are probably at your busiest during that open enrollment period each year, but people turn 65 all year long, and even those already in a plan probably have some questions that, that come up throughout the year. And, and no matter what season or what the date on the calendar, you're always there as a resource. Absolutely. So, right. So when you're turning 65, we're here to help you get on board. It's generally a two appointment process, a lot of education, and then we'll help you pick that, that plan. Once you are on Medicare and you You've picked a plan, which is where we're at today. We just want you to make sure that you understand all your plan benefits. Now, if you come and see us, I, you will understand your benefits because we meet with you once a year or again, any time of the year, if you even want a refresher. Um, for many people, they're pretty healthy. They don't use their benefits a lot. And then when they need to, they're like, oh, how did this work again? Could you walk me through it? And that's what we're doing throughout the course of the year. 
or we're getting calls from people who might not have had an agent, you can enroll online on your own. You, you don't need the services of an agent or an advisor like myself. The premiums are no different than what I would sell you versus going directly to the insurance company. But the benefit is having somebody who is your advocate. So having said that, I will get people that will come and see me and they will say, you know, I just went ahead and did it myself. I, I thought I knew what I was doing and come to find out I made a mistake. You know, if, I picked if, a plan where the doctor didn't participate. Yeah, now if, there, if there's no difference in price, why not go to a resource that is well versed with, with these things? I know we live maybe more than ever in kind of a do-it-yourself society, but there are certain things that I am willing to pay for knowledge and expertise on. And if there's no difference in price, whether I, I get that help and assistance and education or not, I don't see it as, as anything other than a lose-lose going on my own versus a win-win, Nancy, and turning to somebody like you that has that information, has that experience, has the education to guide me through it. And that is one of the things that I believe does make us different. Um, we continue to meet face to face. Many of our clients still want to meet in person. We have the annual reviews. If a person is out of town and we pretty much service the whole state of Michigan, we're more than happy to jump on with a Zoom call or do a telephone call, or whatever is going to be the easiest. But there's something about that personal contact, I think, that makes a real difference. We also share materials. Um, I've been to presentations where everything had to be done online. No, we will share you. We will share with you hard copies and diagrams and pictures and copies of things. Um, we can go either way, more electronic or the paper route, but we're going to do it the way that you want to do it, the way that you are most comfortable in terms of learning something that is a brand new benefit. Um, it, it's something that most people don't even think about until they get close to being 65. And then it's like, wow, where do I start? It is different than a group plan when you were working. And your health and your health care coverage obviously is going to affect your wealth. And in some cases, vice versa, your financial situation can actually affect and impact some of the health care options and, and some of the expenses that you may have there. So the two are intertwined. They're codependent. And that's why at Cornerstone Retirement Partners, they've got teams that focus in on both sides of the equation. Ron and Nolan on the wealth side, Nancy and her team on the health side. You can take care of all of it in one swoop there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. All of the planning needs that you have, ladies and gentlemen, pick up the phone and give a call. 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581. Uh, we're all cost conscious, Nancy. Our dollar is important. We want to stretch it as far as possible. We're speaking today specifically about these advantages plans. And it sounded like the cost was one of the advantages of the advantage plans. Absolutely. So as mentioned previously, uh, more than ever before, I saw a lot of zero premium plans. And if you were to look at the different carriers and insurance companies that have these plans, they generally have kind of a a zero premium plan, and then they have a middle of the road plan where you're going to pay something in premium, and then they got a higher end side of things. Now, now point of note, when you say sure. a zero premium plan, there is still a premium for the part B, because we have to use it in combination. Am I getting that correct? Absolutely. And, okay. and that is a question that is asked. So even though we combine A and B in it equals C that we're going to elaborate on, you still are responsible for paying your Part B premium. And the Part B premium, just as a reminder, if you're on Social Security, it's automatically deducted. And if you're not on Social Security, you get a quarterly bill. And then you have an option of how to pay that until you finally are on Social Security. But yes, everybody pays a Part B. And in conjunction with that, because this is also a common question, if I have a zero premium plan, how does the plan get paid? I mean, they got to make money too, right? To stay in business. And what happens is the government in the fall, Medicare and Medicaid, they will rate each Medicare Advantage plan with a number of stars. And a five-star plan is the absolute best you could have. 
hundred percent virtually on everything. Okay. It's based on the quality. It's based on they, how they, they fill their prescriptions. It's based on customer service scores, doctors and their requirements for preventative services. The list goes on and on and on. But once they have obtained X number of stars, they then are provided monies from Medicare and Medicaid based on the number of stars. So if I'm a five-star plan, I'm going to get more money than if I'm a four-star plan. It doesn't mean that the plan isn't good. It just means that in terms of the eyes of the government, that they have met and checked off all those tick marks. So um, we do have a five-star plan in Western Michigan. It's the first I've seen, I think, since I've been doing this. So it's kind of exciting to see that. But it is a once-a-year scenario. And every year you'll see three, three and a half, four, four and a half. But just from a financial perspective for the plan, they're always aiming to get the most number of stars because that means more money uh, for them. Okay. Okay. So we should be paying attention to that rating. I take it as we are making some choices and decisions. And- I, I, I think so. I, yeah. I do. You know, I generally say to people, you know, um, the more stars, the better, but you want to take into consideration the whole plan. And um, I know we're going to talk more about some of the ads and that type of thing, which really speak to the you, you can't take anything it is just one single factor. You hear the zero, but there's a whole lot more to the story. So when we say four stars or four and a half stars, yeah, that's a good start. But again, from there, we've got to make sure that we understand really all the particulars, all the specifics of the plan. And in and, and, and the first one, like, as I mentioned earlier, was the whole idea of the doctors. Are they in the network? So most of the plans are going to have an in-network condition. They're going to have an out-of-network condition. Yeah, well, I, I know when paying attention to like Rotten Tomatoes and their ratings of the movies, sometimes I like a movie that gets a lower score. But when I'm booking hotel stays, there's a noticeable difference between a five-star, a three-star, and a one-star. And I'm certain the same is true here. We've We want to pay attention to these ratings of these plans, ladies and gentlemen. And we also want to sort through all of the benefits and take advantage of the benefits that one plan may have that another one may not and make sure that we're getting the most out of our plan. And we will talk about that when we come back here with Nancy Corser on today's edition of Your Course to Retirement. If you have any questions, if you'd like to double check your plan at any point in time, if you're turning 65 and it's that time for you to enroll and you want to make sure that you're making the best decision, pick up the phone and give Cornerstone Retirement Partners and Nancy Corser and her team a call. 616-301-2581. That is 616. 616- 301-2581, 616-301-2581. Quick break. We'll be back with more here on Your Course to Retirement with Nancy Corser talking over Medicare Advantage plans and what you need to know. Cornerstone Retirement Partners presents Your Course to Retirement with Grand Rapids Certified Financial Planner Ron Corser and Nolan Gosley. Cornerstone Retirement Partners are planning today for the potential of tomorrow. Visit cornerstone-rp.com for many valuable resources, including those mentioned on this show and other great episodes of Your Course to Retirement. And we're back here on Your Course to Retirement today with special guest Nancy Corser. She heads up the healthcare side of planning there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. Grand Rapids, your resource for the common sense approach that we need to our health and our wealth can be found at the teams there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. If you've got questions about planning for your financial future, the health benefits and protections that you need to have in place and the asset management, how to make the most of your dollars and then the benefits and plans that we have available to cover healthcare expenses with the least amount out of pocket possible. That's why they have combined forces there. That's why they have it all under one roof at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. You can give them a call for a planning review strategy session or just to get questions answered and addressed 616-301-2581-616. 
301-2581. You can also always go online, cornerstone-rp.com, cornerstone-rp.com. So Nancy, as we are signing up for a plan, as we are making these decisions, ultimately we have some costs that are likely going to come out of our wallet, out of our pocket, out of our accounts to pay for healthcare expenses or directly out of our social security payments and income. For that cost, we want to get the most bang for our buck and the most out of our plan. How do we make sure that we are getting all that we're entitled to and everything out of our plan that we can? Okay. Okay. Good question. So in terms of the Medicare Advantage plan, what makes it attractive? in addition to the lower premium, is going to be the value-added services. So the value-added services are items such as preventative dental, vision, and hearing. We can start with those. So when we say value-added, we're talking about the fact that Medicare does not include any coverage for dental, vision, and hearing. A little bit of a caveat, yes, if a person needs to have cataract surgery, that would be considered a medical expense. But when we talk about preventative dental, vision, and hearing to start with, we're talking about just the wear and tear in terms of getting older and the aging process associated with our teeth and our eyes and our hearing. So one of the attractive features of the Advantage plan is they embed within the premium price those particular items. So most of the Advantage plans will offer up two preventative dental visits. Often they'll include bite wing x-rays and the ability even to buy up for more dental. The key here as I mentioned earlier about the network, is that these items or benefits also work within the concept and confines of a network. So different plans work with different networks. We're not really here talking about different carriers or insurance companies, but again, that's something that in working with either an advisor or doing your homework, you want to make sure that you know what the name of the network is. So we've heard of Delta Dental. Well, someone else has a different dental network, so on and so forth. So don't make an assumption that it's only one particular name of a dentist or a, a network, if you will. Same thing with vision. There really are two networks. It's VSP and I met. You want to make sure that your plan participates in either one or both, but you got to know which one because otherwise you're going to pay more. The other one being hearing, and there's a whole lot of different networks for hearing. So I'm known, again, not going to go into the specifics, but the reminder there is keep in mind that there is a network. But again, back to the attractive features of the Medicare Advantage plan. So we've got dental, vision, and hearing. Don't have to pay any extra for it. You can even buy more coverage for the year if you so desire. Yeah, and and no no offense intended here, Nancy, but when I think of aging, vision, hearing, and dental health are some of those things that I I tend to associate. We're going to have to have some routine maintenance and and probably bear some uh, some expenses with. So this is a big advantage to Advantage plans that we have some of those included. It it is, and and it's definitely a a real selling feature of these particular plans. Again, you want to make sure that your doctors participate to make it worth your while, but in looking at the big picture, the, the trade-off is on the Medigap side. You don't have any out-of-pocket for your medical. You've paid more in a premium. So you do perhaps have some monies that you can go out and buy a standard or standalone dental plan. So you got to look at the big picture financially. You got to look at what my health looks like. If I'm on the Medicare Advantage plan side and I don't have a lot of health issues, and my dad is kind of a good example of that. So he was on the Medigap side and he made a move to the Medicare Advantage plan about two years ago. That was one of the factors. He looked at it and he said, when I look overall at what I think I'm going to spend on my medical, I save enough money 
where, yeah, the dental really makes good sense to me to let it be embedded. And then if I have to pay something in co-pays that I'm not really planning on right now, I've got that extra money to be able to spend on the medical side. So it, 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 it's an attractive selling feature. There's no doubt about it. So now that the open enrollment period has ended, again, that generally goes through mid-October through, I think, the early part of December. Um, mm -hmm. What can people do to use all of their one-stop shopping benefits? And, and again, make sure that they're getting the most out of these plans that, that do have some advantages and, and, and benefits over and above uh, some of the basic Medicare coverage options. Sure. So some of the plans, in fact, actually most of them now, it's changed over the course of every year. Every year, the plans, they, they get more enhanced and more beefed up and offering more benefits and more services. So a new one uh, within the last couple of years is the over-the-counter benefit. So most of the insurance companies or the providers are going to offer on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis the opportunity for a person to purchase over-the-counter items, which typically can either be done either online, they can go into a store, or they can even make a phone call. There's a catalog that is sent to them or they can request. And from there, they'll be given an allotment of money per quarter, could be 25, could be $50, could even be as high as 70 or $75 a quarter. With that, they'll be able to purchase over-the-counter items like Band-Aids, vitamins are a big one, uh, Pepto-Bismol, uh, Rolaids, the list goes on and on. These are not prescriptions, but these are items that you would perhaps go into the store or the pharmacy and be able to use this credit, if you will. They'll ring them right through at the register. They do have to be eligible over-the-counter designated items. You don't get to just kind of pick whatever you want. But again, the list is very comprehensive. Most of the time, the plans will require when you're first coming aboard that you sign up. So there's a phone number or a website that you go to. They will mail you a debit card that you will literally use in that capacity, either at the store or you'll have a series of numbers on your card when you make the phone call. Um, some folks have even arranged for pickup at the, the appropriate store in the event that they're still at home or, or whatever their circumstance is, but they make it as easy as possible. The key to it is it's a use it or lose it. So if you do not use the monies that are set aside for the quarter, the money will be gone and then they will load that same increment for the next quarter. So you'll have four quarters with which to spend those monies that have been set aside for your plan. So I know that they sell milk, bread and greeting cards at a lot of the uh, drugstore chains. You're not talking about that, but a lot of us take vitamins, maybe not necessarily a prescription. Those vitamins can be expensive. Some of those costs may be covered in some of these options that you're talking about, but you got to check and make sure. But did I, did I hear you possibly mention like the delivery services that that are associated with with uh if we can't leave the home actually receiving the medications um I, i'm not sure if i heard that correctly but but i know that there are a lot of different options that that you can order things basically to your door in our modern uh society can can those expenses potentially be covered did i hear that or not yes you did hear that correctly so they generally have a minimum amount in terms of being able to order online and then they will ship directly to you. And it varies by plan, but as long as you order X number of items, then it will come delivered directly to your home. I know that in the past, one of the providers had been Walmart and as far as the store and they would make it possible for the, uh, the, the participant, the provider there to provide you whatever it was that you ordered and then they would bring it right out to your car you know and and you'd be good to go from that standpoint so again it kind of going to vary from company to company cvs has participated in the past um, walgreens has participated again this all depends on what 
insurance company that you have. So you might have insurance company A and they've got a relationship with these grocery stores or, or pharmacies or participant insurance company B and they're going to work with these providers. So you got to know where it is that you got to go to take advantage of all of that. Now, a lot of that is going to be listed in your summary of benefits and your evidence of coverage. So those are two important documents that have been sent to everybody. And if you go through those, they will go into great detail as far as how this all has to play out with the process and with the phone number. And everyone gets a member ID card. And on the member ID card, often it's listed right there as far as here's your over-the-counter and a phone number and a website. Here's your Silver Script Health Club, so on and so forth. I, I wanted to mention that too, but uh, you, you made me think of something Ron talks about how uh, a prospectus lays out all of the details for the mutual fund and all of the information, but very few people actually read it. Kind of like here, I'm, I, I bet very few people actually read through the entirety of that summary of benefits, or if they do, may still have questions about it. Um, you touched on another point for me. If we can avoid extensive health care costs, that's the best of all situations. And there are some health benefits like silver sneakers that are included as part of these advantage plans, right? Exactly. So the advantage plan is managed care. So with it being managed care, they're trying to keep you as healthy as possible. So they're doing things like surveys and they're coming into your home and they're helping you with your meds. And one of those other items is definitely the health club. So the health club membership with the plans that are in our area here are serviced by Silver Sneakers. So that's the name of it. Think of it as an umbrella with, with spokes on that umbrella where one spoke might be this health club Another spoke might be another health club, so on and so forth. So some of the names, although you really need to fine tune it based on where you live, would be Planet Fitness. That's where I go. But not all the Planet Fitnesses participate with Silver Sneakers. So don't assume, again, that just because we have a name, we recognize that all of them participate. Most of the carriers have a website where you can look up your particular health club to make sure that they participate. And if and when they do, you don't pay anything for that particular benefit. So um, the YMCAs in, in Western Michigan do not currently participate, but some of the MVPs do participate. So again, it really depends on where you live, the health club that you want to go see, but most importantly, are they under the umbrella of silver sneakers? And also people that travel, they can use the silver sneakers facilities anywhere in the country. So if you're in Florida and you're down there and you want to continue your program, you, you just punch in that zip code, look at where it is that you want to go and you show your card or give them a call in advance and make sure you got all your T's crossed and I's dotted and you can go to multiple clubs, health clubs, gyms throughout the state of Michigan under the umbrella of silver sneakers. I'm really surprised to hear that the YMCA is, is not included in that list. They need to, to maybe consider that into the future. Um, Nancy, whenever I am signing up for health insurance, and I obviously am a little younger than Medicare age here, but my, my main question is always, if the worst case scenario happens, if I've got some significant health issues, what is my maximum out of pocket for my expenses in any given year? And with the Medicare Advantage plans, we're going to get a, a statement of what that maximum out of pocket expense for routine care would be. And then a quarterly statement that tells us how much of, of that we've, we've actually spent towards, correct? Correct. So that is referred to as the maximum out of pocket. What's different about Medicare is Medicare's maximum out of pocket or for your plan, it does not include prescription drug coverage. So they have carved that component out. That is treated under what we call the 
coverage gap in the donut hole, which is another conversation, but back to what you're referring to with the maximum. So the maximum out of pocket is all of your co-pays, your deductibles that you have written checks for and spent money on that the insurance company accumulates and keeps track of for you. So if you ever hit your maximum out of pocket, then the plan will pay for the next copay, the next deductible, the next out of pocket expense. It all runs from January through the end of December. That, that's the accumulation of time. And depending upon how much you pay in monthly premium for your plan will dictate what the maximum out of pocket is. So the more you spend in monthly premium, and there are plans that have monthly premiums of in excess of $200, okay, with lots of value added services, their maximum out of pocket will be lower than someone who has a zero premium. And theirs is typically in the neighborhood of about the $5,300 range. But again, it varies by plan, just kind of throwing out an average. But once a year, uh, Medicare and Medicare will always say you absolutely must have a catastrophic level and they tend to go up every year, not go down. And the more you spend in premium will determine what your maximum out of pocket is, excluding the drugs. The drugs are not part of the maximum out of pocket. It still seems like a deal to me. I know coverage for myself and my family is like more of the $1,200 a month range. And we're, we're pretty young and healthy, go for one annual physical. So that still seems like a pretty reasonable price to me, even for those maybe uh, plans that have a little bit higher um, monthly premium. Now, Nancy, we hear a lot of ads out there for free plans. And I'd like to hear your take on that. Maybe take a few minutes to address it. I find that very little in life is free. And yet these big names, these famous faces are out here advertising the availability of free plans. And I am, am more than positive you get your fair amount of questions about those. Absolutely. So I never had so many questions this past fall as ever before. And I think this is kind of the second season of all of that. But those ads start in September and some of them are even still going and they are nonstop. And I have even called a few of them myself just to kind of get a little bit of a flavor for how it all works. So my opinion is that in many ways, they're very misleading. When they talk about not paying for anything in zero, 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 there are aspects of the plan that are zero. We just talked about the monthly premium. But that doesn't mean everything else is zero, but they seem to infer that. So unless you unpack what the plan looks like, you're of the belief that maybe everything is zero. The hospital's zero, the outpatient is zero, the meds are zero, you name it. Or they also give you the impression that if you're not getting dental, vision, and hearing, you're really missing out. Well, you may not even be in an Advantage plan, you may have decided to go with the Medigap plan for a variety of reasons. So it, it's very much a, a hook to try to get people to call, and then they will inquire about your zip code. Now, every zip code will have a certain number of Medicare Advantage plans associated with that zip code. And some of the zip codes do indeed have money that's given back. But again, the ads on TV were so general that they inferred that all I had to do was make a phone call and I got $144 back. And what they were really referring to back last year was the Medicare Part B premium. So they, they made it sound like everybody would get that back. Are there plans that do have a bit of a give back? Yes, there are. But again, it goes back to if your doctor doesn't participate in the give back plan, you have to be prepared to go find another doctor. In fact, I have um, two folks, one more recently, that signed up for a plan, had the give back, got ready to go see her doctor and found out that the doctor didn't take the plan. Well, how did that help the person? Again, knowledge is, is power. There's no doubt about that. So when you made those phone calls, you often found that it was based on where you lived and it 
wasn't zero, zero, zero where you lived. Again, you've got to be really cautious about um, listening and, you know, even the ads themselves, they had fine print and the fine print would make reference to the, the area you lived in, but it also made reference to the fact that there are people that are eligible for Medicaid. We, we talked about it earlier. A person eligible, fully eligible for Medicaid, and again, lots of levels of that too, but if they're eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, they are entitled to what's called the special needs plan. The special needs plans, many of them are zero. It is truly zero you don't pay anything for those services, okay? So just beware of the ads. Um, there are zeros embedded in your plan, but they may not be the zeros that you're looking for. You don't wanna be surprised. Physical therapy is one sometimes that catches people off guard. Listening to that ad, it made it sound like you could go to the physical therapist and not pay anything. None of the plans have zero. So you're paying 30 or $40 a pop. Most of the time, the physical therapist wants to see you certainly more than one time. So before you know it, you've spent three or $400. It's not zero. The same thing with the hospital. The hospital does have a copay and they range anywhere between probably 250 and 350 a night. It's not zero. You go to the hospital, you might have a zero premium plan but you pay $700 to go to the hospital for two nights. So you have, to, you, you have to unwrap that package. You have to look at all the parts and pieces of that package to make sure that it makes sense. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds real good. It sounds appealing, but there's an old it saying does. about if it sounds too good to be true and you got to keep in mind. Is. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and your favorite face from television back back in the day or a, a favorite sports athlete, you got to think they probably have not fully educated themselves on all of the ins and outs and intricacies of all of these plans, choices and options. They're they're a paid spokesperson. They they may be a good enough person, but they they don't have the in-depth knowledge. They have not taken the time to dive in and educate themselves. They're basically saying what they're being paid to say. Nothing against those people, but the truth of the matter and the bottom line is that you need to go and check in with a resource that is is fully equipped to answer your questions with the detailed knowledge and education about these systems because it is such an important part of your financial and health picture and, and a mistake in this area can be rather costly. You're expecting zeros in a free plan and then it ends up costing you more than some other plan because there are limits and limitations to, to all of these plans for instance, the example, Nancy, you gave about the physical therapy, that's a big one that a lot of people may encounter at some point in time. We don't want to be bit, we don't want to be surprised by unexpected and unexplained costs. And I think that's why it's so valuable that you and your team are there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners, helping to provide the education to others because you've taken the time to really dive in and educate yourselves. Absolutely. And, and, and I think what we've said there also is we are local. We know this market. We know who the healthcare providers are. We know the insurance companies. We know the plans backwards and forwards. There's lots of plans to pick from, but we are local. We know this market. Whereas by making a phone call to a 1-800 number, they don't know anything about this market. And, they know and, a zip code and they could pull up a few plans. Well, we, we make one phone call and Nancy, I, I have to scratch my head and wonder how many phone calls and emails we're going to be getting in return. Very true. Very true. Yep. But, yep. We, but during open enrollment, it went back to what you said. I mean, lots and lots of people wanted to know and, and we assured them that the plan that they were in was the best plan. And if there were give back programs, we shared that with them. And then we went through the basics of the plan. We always talked about the network. We talked about the maximum amount of pocket. We talked about the value added services. We talked about some of the new um, things that were introduced for the plan. And we made sure that they understood that when they used their plan, that they would potentially have co-pays. So although the primary care doctor in many plans is zero, 
When they got ready to see a specialist, there was $40. When they needed outpatient services, there was $275 or $300 for the visit. So we made sure that they understood how the copays would work if they had to use the plan so that there would be no surprises. The other thing I wanted to mention, and we didn't touch on it, is the Medicare Advantage plans today do allow you to travel anywhere in the world. They're going to work very well here in the US of A. They're also going to work internationally, but again, they're going to have some some terms and conditions that you want to make sure that you're aware of in terms of how you go outside the network, who do you call, so on and so forth. So that's just one other little nuance of the plan that you're going to want to make sure you're aware of. Well, as, as we're getting back to a world where we can travel, <laughs> that may be bit. important. We're, we're wanting to do that a little bit more. We've been pinned up for a while here as, as we get out back out and about and, and maybe even traveling abroad. That's going to be important. Bottom line. It is. Medicare is confusing, can be overwhelming. That's why you need an experienced, qualified, professional expert to help guide you. And Nancy Corser, ladies and gentlemen, is is your local resource. She'll help you understand your plan and your benefits. There is no charge for her services. It is uh, a free of charge, no compensation consultation with her to find the best solution, the best plan, or or educate yourself on the choices and options of the plans that are available to you uh, ahead of time while you're making those decisions, and then the service of a, a go-to resource thereafter on an ongoing basis. So pick up the phone, give a call to Cornerstone Retirement Partners, uh, looking after both the health and the wealth. Ron Corser, certified financial planner, his team, Nolan Gosley on the team as well, obviously. Obviously, Nancy Corser here with us today talking about the health side of planning. So much offered under one roof, a great resource for proactive savers and investors and careful planners who are serious about maintaining quality of life and, and making the most out of each and every dollar into the future. If that's you, pick up the phone, give a call. 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Nancy, always a pleasure getting the opportunity to spend the hour with you. Thank you for being here and, and filling in for Ron on this week's program. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Peter. Have a good one. Tune into Cornerstone Retirement Partners' full radio program, Your Course to Retirement, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock at News Radio WOOD or visit cornerstone-rp.com for many valuable resources, including those mentioned on this show and other great episodes of Your Course to Retirement. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group is solely an indication that the financial advisor has attended training provided by Ed Slot and Company, passed by annual examinations on material covered at conferences and in webinars, and met other membership requirements and does not constitute an endorsement of any kind. Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group members pay a fee for the educational programs that allow them to be included in the Ed Slot's Elite IRA. IRA Advisor Group. Membership does not guarantee investment success. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management, while insurance products pay a commission, which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not refer in any way to securities or investment advisory products. Annuity guarantees are based solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the products featured.